Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned Oxervate. Um, and we talked about this the last time we spoke, so I'm hoping we can spend a little bit of time talking about drawing some, con con you know, sort of contrasting uh, what you're working on versus the, the approach there. Um, is that, uh, it, Oxervate is used to treat NK, correct? Right. That, that's its indication. Uh, and it's the first biologic to be approved for use in a, in a topical front of the eye condition. So. That's yeah, would that be cool. considered? Would that be considered the standard of care right now? I think it's rapidly growing to become the standard of care. Um, I think if if you think about the treatment of patients with NK, uh, the first stage is always to look at: it, are are you treating that patient with any other topical drug that, it, or or even systemic drug that could 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 damage the front of the eye? So, the, the typical drug with a preservative in it. You definitely take a patient off of that. Then you move into therapies that are not proven uh, in, in, in large clinical trials. So you could do uh, serum, you could do uh, platelet-derived uh, factors, you could look at um, uh, insulin is sometimes used. Um, and then, then you go to the sort of more surgical, um, like a chisorophy where you sew a portion of the eye closed so that the lid covers the wound and, and protects it and hopefully helps heal it. Uh, and then the other, the other thing is amniotic membrane. So you can put an amniotic membrane on the surface of the eye. Mm -hmm. So those are sort of the gamish of things that were used prior. And I think Oxervate has, because of its uh, efficacy, uh, has, um, has come to be the standard of care in, in neurotrophic keratitis. Yeah. Efficacy. Uh, however, uh, the, 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 I guess, um, DIY for formulation of, of the therapy struck me the last time we spoke. Um, it, maybe it didn't strike me as much as what you just mentioned, sewing part of the eyelid shut to cover the wound. That sounds sort of barbarian, maybe, maybe effective. I don't know, <laughs> but it <laughs> sounds like we could move away from that if science allows. Um, but, but in the case of Oxervate, I believe you told me it was like a a, a multi, like in the teens step process for the, the patient to self-administer this drug. And that just sounded untenable to me, particularly in a, in a patient population that is, is largely elderly, I would assume. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So the average age of the patient in, in neurotrophic keratitis is roughly around 65 years of age. Mm. And I think, um, so we were, we were blessed with a, with a very stable molecule um, NGF is a uh, neurotrophic growth factor, which is the active ingredient in Oxervate, is, uh, is relatively unstable. And so the drug has to be formulated by the patient. And uh, that, 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 that has a, uh, it, it's inconvenient for the patient. It's inconvenient for the, uh, for the, for the prescriber because they have to teach the patient or their caregiver how to formulate the drug. And, uh, and then from there, it also limits the use of the drug. So we've had conversations in our market research where physicians have said, if my patient's not an A-type personality or they're not, their caregiver's not an A-type personality, I won't even prescribe the drug because I know that they won't, they won't follow through with the, with the compounding of the drug on a daily basis. So I think that's a, it's an important differentiator for us. Uh, we have, a our drugs delivered in, in single use containers and um, preservative free. And uh, we right now we know that we will be able to deliver it to the patient uh, refrigerated, but then from there, the patient has three months at room temperature, which in which they can use the drug. So there'll be no formulation. Um, that's, that's important because it's convenient for the patient, but I think it will also expand the number of patients who can use the drug. Um, and then I think uh, the other aspect of the drug that we're very excited about our drug is that it, it seems to be very safe. Uh, we obviously don't know from, uh, we don't know the, 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 the absolute data from our trial because we're masked. Um, so we don't know who's on drug and vehicle. But if we look at the overall side effect profile, we're seeing that profile is very consistent with the vehicle arm in the Dompe study. So it's it's a it's it's a very uh, we're very happy. It's a it's a great safety profile, and I think that's very very helpful. Um, NGF itself is a uh, pro-inflammatory molecule, and so the patients do exhibit pain and uh, upon installation. And uh, so 
we don't see that. So I think that's going to be another benefit. But I think the coolest thing about our drug is we do see that Swiss Army knife. So I think if we see, we not only see a potential for uh, the treatment of neurotrophic keratitis and and the and the resolution of the of the wound, which is the primary endpoint, but there may be other other aspects of the drug where we see reductions in 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 scarring, which would end up in improvements in vision for the patients. Um, we may also see uh, improvement in um, in sensation with the drug because we, uh, we 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 do grow nerves. So there's a other there there's a lot of reason to believe we we bring more to the patients um, with this disease and then other diseases as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like uh, it's not. It's, it all sounds like upside. Um, what, we have to it, prove it though. We have sure, to prove it. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. You got to prove it. You got to. Yeah, yeah. Of course. As far as proving it goes, I mean, if you prognosticate for a moment on. You know, I mean, part of your job is to is to obviate to see what what could be coming around the bend to thwart your progress that perhaps you know was was unexpected. I think that's what obviate means, right? Expect somehow <laughs> for, for, foreseeing the, the the unexpected and, and being ready to deal with it. Maybe <laughs> loose definition. Um, <laughs> what, what what do you? I mean, can you can you pinpoint anything that that could stand in the way? Like that you're, that you're concerned about. Uh, I, w- I I wake up every night thinking about these things. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It's 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 the other part of the job. I I think for me, I think the the being being we're second to this disease. Um, where we we rely on 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 what's gone before us for powering the trials and. Uh, uh, so we we we're conservative people. So we've we've chosen the 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 vehicle arm in the two trials that Oxervate did that did the best. So there they saw complete healing at week eight at roughly thirty percent in the vehicle arm. So we we're using that as our baseline uh, in the trial. So if that's different uh, in their sec- in their second trial, it was around nineteen percent. So if it's different, but it could be different in 40%, you know, we could see 40% here. Like that's, that's a concern. So that's, that, that to me is the major um, concern. I think, uh, I believe our drug will work uh, from the animal studies, from the, 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 uh, the work that's been done before. I think it, it will work. It's a, it's an endogenous protein that we make to, to, to perform this function in other parts of our body and the eye as well. It's produced in the eye. It's produced in the lacrimal glands. It's produced in the, in, in the, in the cornea. And uh, so it's there, it's there for a reason. We're just providing more of it. So yeah. it should work. But for me, that's the main, the main concern, what, what our vehicle arm is going to do. So speaking of the production of, of HGF, how, how is it produced and manufactured uh, at, at, at Kringle, I'm assuming? Yes. So our, our partner in Japan, Kringle, manufactures the drug. Uh, they use Cho cells, uh, traditional sort of uh, uh, biological manufacturing. Um, and together we're, we're developing a new process, a catalyst, um, to do, uh, to scale, to scale it to a much larger yield than currently Kringle has. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, pro- that process is going very well. So we're, we're very happy and we'll be introducing that API from that in a, in a further um as we, as we move forward into the clinic. Yeah. Uh, the, the effort at Catalan is also Cho, Cho cell. Correct. Correct. It, it's, it's, it's using their GPEX lightning, um, Cho cell and it's, uh, it's a much more modern process and, a, and, a, a more, more advanced cell. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, so as far as, uh, clinical supply right now, you're, you're content with your clinical supply right now, but that, that move, is it, um, to advance into broader clinical studies or is this anticipation of serving a larger patient population? What sort of precipitated the need to, to turn to Catalent and look at a, a you know, scaling that up? Um, I think se- several things. One is we're, we're, we're advancing to commercialization. So I think looking at that perspective from a commercial perspective and having uh, a more robust process, uh, I think the, the process that, that Greenville has is very robust and, the, the when we get the 
certificates of uh, the CRAs from uh, Kringle and we test the drug as we have to, uh, it always hits the numbers right on the spot. The J- Japanese manufacturers of drugs do a very, very good job. Mm-hmm. So there's never been a question of that. But I think as we move into commercial, we're going to need more more drug. And it's always good to have two sources. So that's those are the two main reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so give us a, give us a clinical update. Like where are we right now in terms of clinical activity? And then, you know, may, maybe, uh, n- not to bait you into a forward looking statement, but what might be coming next in terms of, uh, clinical activity for Claris? So we, we have, um, we have completely enrolled our current trial, uh, and we will have a readout in, in, in the latter part of July. So that's, uh, that's, that's very exciting, uh, mm-hmm. nerve wracking, but exciting at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there we have our, we have initiated two, uh, open label trials. Um, one is in a reversal of scar. So in, in the animal work, we were excited by the, uh, the ability to look at preformed scars and see if we can reverse them. And we've been able to show that in, in two animal models that I'd mentioned. And so we're, we're very excited to see if we can do that in, 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 in the human model as it were. And so we, we've enrolled uh, five patients to date in open label trials. Um, and we've, we're seeing some interesting effects. So we're, we're, we're very, very happy with that. Uh, that would be a completely new indication. There's currently no therapy approved for the reversal of scars. And so that would be, uh, it's terra incognita from a regulatory perspective. So that, that'll be, but it's, it's, it's a great area to, to actually go in and remove, remove scars from people that have that in their, in their central vision, uh, I think it would be a huge benefit. Yeah. The that, other indi- that, just, just curious, uh, just to stay there real quick before we move on to the, the other indication, um, when, when you talk about the reversal of, of scar tissue, healing scar tissue, uh, it, you know, it, it, does that open up? Like, am I thinking of this correctly or too simply like that opens up? an entire, like it could be, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how to phrase the question. Like scar- scarring can be caused by any, any manner of things, right? Disease, uh, infection, trauma. Um, so, so are all those on the table when we talk about scarring? Um, almost all of them. I think uh, initially we're looking at um, the initial patients that we're looking at uh, largely microbial keratitis or microbial infection, uh, but we will include viral and we will include, uh, I think we have already included one mechanical injury patient as well. Mm-hmm. So I think, all, all, yeah, you're absolutely right. All of those things are on the table. Yeah. Um, will we be successful in all of them? I don't know, but yeah. we're, we're going to look at you know, as many as we can. Um, and th- the other, the other indication is, is, is limbal stem cell deficiency. So we've, we've, we have enrolled in our trial, and our neurotrophic keratitis trial, about um, about twenty percent of our patients have uh, limbal stem cell deficiency, and we've seen some. Well, obviously, we don't know if they're on drug or vehicle, but for somebody to have an improvement in that area is, is rare, and so we're starting to see that as well. And we in, in some of our mass in some of our patients, and so that's given us the 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 impetus to move forward and look at that as a separate disease. So we're, we'll be in begin enrolling, um, patients this, this week actually, in uh, who have that, uh, limbal stem cell deficiency. And that's a, a brand new indication that, uh, we're very, very excited about because there is no pharmaceutical treatment for those patients. Um, most, most patients actually have to be treated with, uh, a, a, a transplant, a stem cell transplant, mm. the current therapy. So, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, pr- pretty fascinating work. I, what, what haven't I asked you, Clark? That uh, is central to the story that that I should have asked you, if I if I were better at my job. I I think you've done an incredible job of asking really really good questions, and I thank you for that. Well, I appreciate but, uh, that. Yeah. What what's uh what's next for you? Uh, I mean, you're like like I like I mentioned from the outset, you've been plugged into this space for going on twenty years. Um, you know, there's a lot of work to be done at Claris. I, I, I'm not, not going to ask you to tell us where you're going next, but I'm, I'm assuming you're going to plug in at Claris and, and and remain committed to the task for now. But, um, you know, a, any imminent plans for for what Clark does next, whether at Claris or um, otherwise? 
uh, I think, I think for, for, for me right now, Claris is everything. Um, and, uh, we're very much focused on the next stage. So we're, we're preparing for the next trials and we've manufactured drug for that. Uh, we, we've, we've been fortunate to, enough to speak to a lot of, uh, interested, uh, uh, venture groups that would join our series B, um, and we're planning to, uh, to move the company forward into an IPO. So I think that all of those things are, um, are, are, are our main focus. I think for me personally, I think the, the joy of, of being in this space is that if you do a good job, um, and, and by that, I don't mean necessarily if you are, the drug doesn't always work. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but as long as you gave it the best chance and you, you get a result that everybody can sit around and say, yeah, this is the truth. What we found is the truth. Then I think you're fortunate enough to do it again and again. And you get that opportunity. So, yeah. Well, very good. I uh, I appreciate the time that you've spent with us. Very thoughtful conversation. Uh, we, our initial conversation was so that, that's what inspired me to want to have you on the on the podcast. I just en- enjoy the uh, the transparency, the humility uh, behind your approach and your personality. And I I'm glad you came on to spend some time with us, Clark. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate we'll, uh, it. We'll, we'll do it again. We'll, uh, you know, you've got, you've got a readout coming up in July. You got a, a lot of exciting stuff coming down, so, down the pike. So we'll stay in touch and we'll have you back on uh, when there's, when there's more to report on. Thank you very much. I look forward to that.